I want to uh, talk this morning about um, the idea of making data computable. And uh, it's, it's sort of part of a big story, um, the story of computable knowledge that uh, I've been pursuing now for about 30 years. So what's the basic idea? Well, there's, there's all sorts of knowledge that our civilization has accumulated. Uh, but the question is, how, how do we answer questions on the basis of that knowledge? So for, for 50 or so years, science fiction has assumed that one day, you know, we'd effectively just be able to sort of walk up to a computer and ask any question. And uh, if that question could be answered uh, using, on the basis of known knowledge, we'd be able to get an answer. Turned out to be much harder to make that work than people assumed. But a number of years ago, I, I realized on the basis of a, of a big piece of basic science that I've been doing that uh, done the right way, that might not actually be impossibly hard. So conveniently, I had uh, this sort of amazing technology stack based on the Mathematica system and language that we've been developing for the, for the past 25 years. Um, and uh, so I, I started on a sort of incredibly ambitious project of uh, trying to make uh, every part of the world's knowledge that I could computable. Well, uh, two years ago, we, we released uh, sort of the first milestone in this, well, from Alpha, so I could show you a little bit of the, of the website version of this. There, there are also mobile and API and partner and enterprise and embedded versions and so on as well. So the, the basic idea is you type in a query, and Wolfram Alpha tries to use what it knows uh, to compute an answer. So let's, uh, let's see if it's actually alive and well here. Let's try something really easy. OK, that's a good sign. The, um, so we could compute something uh, mathy. You know, we could say. What's the, uh, what's the integral of um, something, uh, some, some math computation like this? And what Wolfram Alpha will do is first it will just give us the answer, then it will start telling us other things that it thinks we might find interesting about uh, that, um, uh, that particular computation. So one of the big things is that uh, to know sort of lots of stuff about the world at large. So if I say, you know, what's the GDP of Italy? Um, it should know the answer to that if I say, uh, uh, in sort of what is the GDP of Italy divided by Spain, for example. Um, it's uh, we as humans can understand what, uh, what that query means, um, and uh, so come off from Alpha, and uh, tells us the answer and gives us a plot and so on. So we can, we can ask all kinds of things. I don't know what's, uh, what's a good thing we might ask. Let's ask uh, the weather or something. We can, um, uh, okay, this is a... Uh, says it should be raining soon. It's always, always good when you have a software system that where you can just look out of the window and find out whether, whether it's giving the right answer or not. Um, but uh, we, can, um, we can look at uh, the weather for the past 10 years in New York City or something, um, and then we, we get an answer like that. Or we could say, let's try doing something like this. Let's say uh, something like, um, uh, I'm going to use a. Um, just because I always like to use the very latest and greatest thing, I'm going to use a development version of, of Wolfram Alpha instead here. So this, is, uh, this asks what flights are overhead here right now. So we could go and uh, let's see what, uh, what's going on with this particular uh, flight, let's see whether it works. Um, OK, so this is some plane. We get some feed from the FAA. We compute a bunch of things from it. Uh, here's this particular plane. Um, we can see there, OK. Not too exciting. It just climbed up to its uh, cruising altitude and sat there. Um, but it's kind of interesting to be able to see these kinds of things. And it's sort of, uh, it's always been, been uh, as, we've, as we've developed the Wolfram Alpha project, one of the things that's sort of been the most surprising to me is how much of the things that are out there in the world end up having things that can be computed about them. Like, I don't know, I was just talking to somebody about uh, first names. And uh, you type in uh, some first name. Uh, you can easily know what the distribution of um, uh, when people with that first name, how many babies were born with that first name. But then you can compute from that by convolving it with, um, uh, with, the, um, uh, with the mortality distribution. You can figure out how many people alive today, what, what will be the age distribution of monikers alive today. And uh, we were just talking about uh, what, what, um, what causes that, um, that downward dip there and those upward things there. And by knowing about all sorts of other data, like uh, what, other, what famous monikers are there in the world, you can guess things about why there was a, a decrease in the number of monikers named uh, at a certain date and so on. Or uh, the speculation was that um, the, uh, uh, 
the, the, an increase in monikers occurred as a result of the, of the Friends TV series, and you can go and ask Wolf from Alpha uh, what it knows about that, and it knows in great detail about all the different episodes of that show and so on. Um, what's, what's, what's often, it's, it really is, uh, uh, remains surprising to me just how many things about the world actually end up being uh, computable in some, in some way or another. Um, let's, try, um, let's try this. Let's say um, um, something like this. Let's see. Um, hmm. We can probably, uh, uh, I was going to, I'm going to show you digging into some, some kinds of, uh, of, of computations about the text in a, in, a, in, a, in a play like that and so on. Or you can go and um, do other kinds of computations like you could um, uh, type in something like this and Wolfram Alpha will, uh, will figure out that that's probably a genome sequence and it'll go and look on the human genome and figure out where there are matches for that particular genome sequence uh, on the human genome and so on. So lo lots of different domains of, of knowledge um, that Wolfram Alpha handles. And actually, maybe while I, while I go on talking, there's, there's sort of a list of kinds of domains that we've, we've tackled. Maybe while I go on talking, I can let it uh, run in the background and kind of show you a few things that, uh, that it can do. Well, so, so what is this thing? How does, how does it work? Uh, at a systems level, it's a, it's a pretty crunchy system made from about, nowadays, about 15 million lines of Mathematica code, a bunch of terabytes of curated data, lots of real-time feeds, and so on. Um, there are really four big parts to the system. Data, algorithms, linguistics, and presentation. So let, let me talk a little bit about each one of those. First of all, the data. So we need data on everything, thousands of domains, and we want it all curated and stored in the, in the Wolfram Alpha system and set up to be computable. So it's, it's, um, it's always a big deal for us to make sure that in every domain we, we arrange to get sort of the best, most definitive data. Um, we're, we're not foraging data from random places on the web or something. We're, we're typically finding the best possible systematic sources and arranging to get the best possible data from them. So then the first step is just moving all that data into our systems which is typically extremely easy. Um, although over time, we've, we've had to do a lot of things. Recent, a recent uh, thing that we've just been developing uh, is versioning of our databases, and we have sort of a calculus of database versioning. That's kind of interesting, but I'm not going to get off into that technical discussion right now. Um, but in any case, just, just sort of getting the data into the system is typically very easy. Then the real work starts, taking that sort of raw data, curating it, and then actually making it computable. I mean, we built by now a very streamlined process for doing this. Um, of course, it's a lot easier now that we uh, already have thousands of kinds of data already in the system because we get to do all sorts of uh, kind of fancy automatic mathematical analysis validating and correlating uh, these, different, these different domains of data. One thing we have learned, though, is that it can't all be automated. Uh, you really actually have to understand the data um, and you have to, what, what does the data mean? How is it represented? Um, and part of our process is to inject actual human experts in at the right time to sort of get the data into a form that we can really compute from. Okay, so, so there's data. But individual pieces of data are rarely the answers that people are actually looking for. Usually people want to compute something from data for whatever particular situation they're interested in to answer whatever particular specific question they have. And this, the, for this, we need sort of the next part of the Wolfram Alpha technology stack, algorithms. So we need to implement all the sort of methods and models and algorithms and so on from all areas of science and analysis and, and all that kind of thing. And, uh, well, millions of lines of rather dense Mathematica code later, we've at least done a lot of that. It, it's, it's kind of funny. In the past, one might have assumed that, um, uh, that what we're doing would sort of uh, require solving sort of the whole problem of artificial intelligence. Um, and one of the things that I realized from my sort of efforts in basic science is that it was possible to sidestep that. So let, let's say we're asked to solve uh, some uh, mechanical problem. Well, sort of artificial intelligence might suggest that we'd have to kind of reason about that mechanical problem like a person. You know, this, this thing pushes on that, which pushes this, and so on. But what we actually are able to do in Wolfram Alpha um, is just pure computation. We're able to sort of make use of all that science that's been figured out in the past few hundred years and uh, to just sort of get the equations for the thing set up and then blast through to the answer. Okay, so we've got all this data. We can compute all sorts of things from it. But uh, 
How, how do we say what we want? How do we as human users of a system like this say what we want? Well, just like in science fiction, uh, the, the kind of the idea is we should just be able to ask in sort of regular human language. I have to say that I thought that being able to make this work would just, it would just be impossible. Um, after all, there's been, there's been so much work done on natural language uh, understanding over the years. Um, but, I'm, but I'm happy to say that, that uh, partly thanks to some, some ideas from my big basic science project, uh, we got a bunch of new ways to, to be able to handle human free-form language. So it's kind of interesting. What, what people type into the, into the Wolfram Alpha query box isn't actually really ordinary natural language, it's, uh, nor is it just a bag of keywords. It's some kind of strange stuff that I think is probably pretty close to kind of raw human thoughts. But anyway, with, with lots of work and algorithms and so on, we're able now to do, uh, uh, we're able to get to about the 90 plus percent level uh, of understanding this, uh, this weird kind of language that, uh, that people type into the Wolfram Alpha query box. So when somebody types something in, what we're doing is to translate it into a precise symbolic internal representation from which we can compute. I, I might say that the, in addition to sort of clever algorithms, there's another critical piece, which is we use all the knowledge we have. And that's critical to understanding how to disambiguate things that people input and so on. Okay, so we've got the data, we've got the algorithms, we've got the input understanding. So now what do we actually compute? Well, that's a whole other area, automatically figuring out what to present. And something we've learned is that that's really important. I mean, it turns out people don't just want plain one-number answers or something. They want context. They want uh, sort of that automatically presented so that they can easily assimilate it. Well, it's all a, a sort of a huge technology stack. Um, I mean, I, I've worked on complex projects before, but I think Wolfram Alpha is, is uh, uh, by, by almost any measure, sort of absurdly complicated with a huge number of moving parts. Um, and I guess, uh, I guess there are a bunch of things people often ask about it. Uh, first, they kind of assume it's, it's somehow like a search engine foraging stuff off the web. It's not. The idea is actually to ingest all of the knowledge, make it computable, and then explicitly compute from it. I mean, with a search engine, you can search for things people explicitly wrote down before on the web. But the idea of Wolfram Alpha is to be able to compute things whether or not anyone ever wrote anything like that down before. On, or. So, and in fact, uh, for example, right now on the, on the Wolfram Alpha website, the vast majority of queries that we get have zero hits if you type them literally into a, to a search engine. So, so the things that really have to be complete, computed fresh. Well, another thing uh, uh, is that what we're trying to do is a lot more ambitious, in a sense, than a search engine. We're not, we're not just giving links to other people's content. We're actually trying to give answers directly uh, that people can not just read, but, uh, but directly use, say, say, in a program. And it's important to realize that the way we get answers is by actually understanding the question. I mean, we're not doing sort of an information retrieval kind of, uh, kind of thing like, like the IBM Watson system, for example, where, where we sort of grind up text and try and pull out fragments of answers. Uh, we're, we're turning questions into actual, precise, symbolic expressions uh, from which we can do real computations. So something, something people often say is, um, uh, but, but can you scale this whole Wolfram Alpha idea up? I mean, you do all this curation with nasty, dirty, actual humans and so on. Uh, isn't there a way to automate sort of everything that happens? Well, why can't you just automatically forage everything off the web? Well, I can, I can tell you pretty definitively that that just doesn't work at any level of reliability. I mean, it's always frustrating. I mean, you, you try sort of the fanciest possible natural language processing and machine learning and so on. And at the beginning, you, you, you say, wow, this is, you know, is going to really work because the first five things you try do work. Um, then there's the sixth one. And it's just absolutely insanely wrong. And then maybe the next one works. Then you have a run of three that don't and, and so on. And what you, what you quickly realize is that, yes, for some common things, you might get as, as, as much as 70% success rate. But the trouble is you never know which ones are the 30% that are completely crazily wrong. And if you're going to compute something from data, having it wrong pretty soon magnifies into having some piece of it wrong magnifies into just complete nonsense. So... It's, it's actually been, uh, 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 it's, it's also the case that what's on the web is not, is not very systematic data, and you, you need to have things that are much further in the tail than typically can be found on the, on the, on the exposed web. 
So it's been exciting scaling up the Wolfram Alpha project. It, it, um, I, I was not really sure it was going to be possible at all, um, but it's actually been working really well, and we're, we're steadily steaming forward, putting sort of more and more into Wolfram Alpha. Um, in, the, in the near future, particularly, well, lots of consumer areas. I don't know. I could show you. Let's try um, something different just, just for fun. Let's try um, something like... Um, uh, let's try something like this. Uh, just as an example of consumer data. Oh, well, that didn't work, so let's, let's try. Um, uh, how about that? Oh, you know what? Well, so I told you it didn't exist yet. It doesn't exist yet. Um, let's try. Um, ah. so, uh, oh, you know, I'm going to have to cheat here and actually use the internal development version. Um, there we go. Okay, that's better. So this is just some, some typical consumer data, um, and uh, you can start to see all sorts of fun uh, price distributions and learn things about um, how consumer product companies choose to do their pricing and so on, all kinds of fun distributions of things. And, and you can start to go in and, uh, uh, and compute and ask very detailed questions about give me a... Uh, a device that, uh, in, a, in a case where you might have an electronic component or something, give me something which, based on actual computations of how the component behaves, uh, will be the right thing to fit into such and such a thing. So, for, for example, I don't know, if, you, if we type in something like, um, uh, something like this, let's say we wanted a 456-ohm uh, resistor. Well, probably a 456-ohm resistor isn't made, but you can make a 456-ohm resistor by combinations of other resistors, and, and these are ways that we can compute that you can do that and so on. Well, okay, so there's the Wolfram Alpha website. There are mobile app versions of, of uh, Wolfram Alpha, which are, which are really popular, not least because on mobile there's sort of a great premium of, uh, of you know, don't just send me links, give me an actual answer. Uh, I don't have time to, to wait for the network to, to connect to something else. Um, actually, sort of raw Wolfram Alpha in general is really just the tip of an iceberg because really Wolfram Alpha is sort of a, a platform for, for what I call knowledge-based computing. I mean, normally when we build code, we imagine that our code is in a sense uh, uh, building from raw components and that if there's data or knowledge that we need, we're going to have to add that data or knowledge explicitly. So what Wolfram Alpha does is, is in effect just to, to let us start from the knowledge of the world and then build from there. And there are all sorts of powerful things that you can do with that. And I noticed that uh, what notes I had here ran out there, so, so I obviously have the wrong... Um, let me see if I, have, um, if I have more notes about what I was going to, going to talk about here. Um, well, let, let me go on and tell you about some, some other things that are happening. So, so in... in um, uh, so this, this kind of platform of knowledge-based computing has, has lots of things that, uh, that it may become possible with it. Um, and we've been, we've been having sort of a very interesting time uh, developing from this. So one of the things that, um, uh, that's interesting is to make use of uh, some of the capabilities that we have in Wolfram Alpha um, in other systems. So there are lots of partners of ours who are doing interesting things. There'll be a bunch of these things rolling out this fall. Um, there's some things that we've been able to do ourself, ourselves. Um, let me show you uh, an example. Um, one of them is, is within Mathematica. Mathematica is sort of the, the foundational language and system that uh, we use to build Wolfram Alpha. I started developing Mathematica actually 25 years ago this, this month. And Mathematica has sort of grown over the years from its sort of original base in kind of the... Uh, uh, the kind of mathematical sciences and physical sciences to something much broader that gets used across sort of a, a very wide range of technical areas and in particular is used uh, greatly for, for doing things with data. It's sort of become kind of the most flexible system for dealing with data in all sorts of different ways. And uh, I don't know, maybe I should uh, just show you what does, what does raw Mathematica look like and we can perhaps uh, uh, pull in some data and... Um, uh, do some things with it. So, you know, here's, uh, here's just a simple raw Mathematica. Do that. We can say, um, uh, make a little interface where we make, um, where we manipulate this uh, with um, this parameter A varying from 1 to 10. Okay, now we'll get some kind of, um, uh, some kind of thing where we can uh, vary that there. Um, we could, for example, let's say we take, um, uh, let's go and um, 
let's just find some random image of something. So let's say um, uh, an image of, um, let's get a, uh, a picture of an elephant, let's say. Let's see if we can pull that up. Um, and, uh, oops, let's copy that image. And um, then we can stick that picture of an elephant, hopefully, into Mathematica. And this is now a piece of data like anything else. So we can just say it's just like a, a we can use some function. Let's say we say edge detect that elephant. Um, now there's the result of edge detecting the elephant. Or we could say uh, uh, something like um, uh, image partition um, that elephant into, let's say, uh, size 20 blocks. And then we can do all kinds of, uh, of operations on it. Um, one of the great things about Mathematica is that there are all these different, uh, we've sort of over the years been trying to collect kind of all possible well-defined algorithms and fit them together in a sort of systematic way. And uh, one of my big efforts in, in life, so to speak, has been to maintain kind of uh, consistent, uh, did I run out of time already? Oh, well. Okay. Let me show you one. one <laughs> Just one more thing. <laughs> okay. Well. I don't, I don't need to, but, but um, I thought it might be interesting to people to see uh, one of the things that, that's coming in Wolfram Alpha is the ability not just to, um, uh, to deal with data that's already in Wolfram Alpha, but to be able to upload new data to Wolfram Alpha. And one of the things that's interesting there is you can kind of take um, some, uh, some area of data, let's say it comes from a spreadsheet or a database or something, use our linguistic processing system um, to be able to disambiguate things, then get that uh, all uploaded into Wolfram Alpha, and then be able to start um, uh, querying from, um, from, your, uh, from your data set. So um, I don't know, we could say uh, uh, this was a data set of, um, uh, of things about dogs. And so now using our data set, we're then able to compute things like this, and we could say, you know, the weight of an Afghan hound, which might have been an hour, which is then pulled out of our data set. We could say that divided by, let's say, weight of an elephant or something. Um, and uh, we can, uh, we can oh, no, no data about that. How about weight of an, uh, of an iPhone? Um, <laughs> okay, that's a, that's a good sign. So, so this is something where we're taking uh, external data and being able to process it through a piece of our pipeline um, to integrate it with kind of to, to make it computable and make it so that you can sort of ask arbitrary questions in, in kind of a natural language form. And I guess I should stop. Thank you so. very much, Steve. Is there time for any questions? Or? Probably don't have time for questions now, but you will be sticking around. You'll be around today. No. Uh, no, but I'll, I'll be around uh, for a short time. For a short, so. for a short while. Okay. I did want to Go ask ahead. you one question. Go ahead. Though, um, because you just mentioned integrating your own people, organizations integrating their own data yes. with Alpha. So is this something that y people can do now, you know, get Alpha and integrate it with their private corporate data? So they're, they're really two branches. So we have a business making customized versions of Wolfram Alpha for uh, large organizations. Um, that's something that has been very successful. The results are terrific. We've done it across a bunch of different industries. But it's an expensive, difficult process because it requires actually going through sort of our whole pipeline of, of, uh, uh, of, of making, making things computable. Um, what, what we're providing here is kind of a, a junior self-service version of a piece of that. Um, I actually don't know. So there, there's sort of an interesting uh, kind of um, uh, uh, progression from data which is being handled by the people who produce the data so that they understand exactly what's in the data and sort of the experts um, uh, can deal with it to data that's being looked at by people who have no idea about what's in the data and are just asking kind of free-form executive questions, so to speak. And so when, you know, when we do a big custom from Alpha system, the goal is to make it so that uh, people who are complete non-experts can ask sort of right. free-form questions and get answers. I don't yet know how far it's going to be possible to go with this sort of self-service data upload towards the, the uh, getting the non-expert to be able to, to answer questions. But we'll, we'll find out over the next few months. It'll be interesting. Certainly a, a very exciting mission. Thank you so right. much for joining us. Great. Thank you.